Good evening, and welcome to the uh, school board meeting for the Merrimack School District, SAU 26, um, for June 19th, 2023. Uh, can we have everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, we're going to open up uh, to public participation. If you would like to speak, we'd ask that you come to the microphone and please state your name and your address. If you are a student, there is no need to state your address, just your name. So we will open the floor to public participation. Seeing none, we will move on um, to recognitions. Uh, we have no recognitions tonight. We'll pick up uh, the very beginning of September. There you go. Uh, then we will sh shall move on to informal updates, starting with the superintendent's update. All right. Thank you, uh, Ken. Um, first of all, um, I want to wish everyone, our staff, our students, all of you, uh, parents, members of the community, a wonderful summer vacation. It's, um, it's been a very good school year. It's been a busy year like every other one. But it's been a very successful year. Um, thanks very much to our administrators and uh, our staff because it made magical things happen for many, many students. Um, so thank you again. I had a um, wonderful opportunity to have lunch with the bus drivers last week and thank them for their many miles of safe driving. Yes, we have had a couple of fender benders and uh, bumps here and there, but. Uh, thousands and thousands of miles of safe driving and uh, they've done a very very fine uh, job in the uh, late summer we're going to do a uh, as part of my, one of my cable programs we're going to do a cable program on school bus safety in terms of the uh, danger zone around the outside of the bus where most accidents happen uh, we'll talk about the uh, the interior of the bus where um, and i've done a lot of research over the years on school bus transportation what the National Highway Transportation Safety Board calls a non-aggressive, wonderful governmental term, non-aggressive environment in terms of the height of the seat, spacing of the seat, and the padding of the seat. Why we don't have school, uh, seat belts on uh, school buses, particularly lap belts, uh, and also why we don't have shoulder belts. So lots and lots of informational uh, uh, tidbits for parents and for students. Uh, so it's very important to know. We'll talk about school bus safety drills that are uh, mandatory in nature uh, and what those uh, look like. So it's uh, looking forward to do that, doing that and hopefully uh, uh, on site with an actual bus uh, and the dispatcher from the uh, bus company will be, uh, will be with me. Uh, we will be starting and I'll be getting information out to parents shortly, uh, centralized registration uh, in July. Uh, Patty Townsend, um, I have selected to be the school department registrar. Um, she will be taking over that assignment and um, the individual school registrations will now go to Patty. She'll be housed at the student services building across the street from our central office. Uh, we'll get information out to all the parents. Uh, we're gonna be meeting with the, uh, the administrative assistants in the schools also to talk about the process. So we'll talk with the leadership team also about that process. Um, We'll be set up to go actually uh, probably a little bit closer to, to mid-July than the beginning of uh, July. Um, Amy and I have been meeting with the um, help of the elementary principals, with the elementary staff to talk about um, what we're looking to do uh, from a curriculum and instructional uh, perspective. Amy has been fabulous in terms of planning it all out in terms of literacy and math instruction, working with the members of the leadership team. Uh, talking with the staff about making sure that, that what we do is consistent among the, uh, um, among the schools. Um, we had Polly Bath, who is a nationally known behavior expert, worked with the uh, leadership team last week. We'll continue with her throughout the year, talking about the multi-tier system of uh, supports, um, what different behaviors, what different tier one, tier two, tier three behaviors look like, and how to effectively address those. Um, I want to congratulate uh, those students who received awards uh, at the uh, high school, Merrimack High School Awards Night, was $135,000 in awards given out 
uh, thanks to the sponsorship of 60 organizations and 61 students benefited from that. Uh, I want to congratulate once again Ryan Church, uh, who is uh, the state champ and uh, uh, in bowling, and he was a member of the team, the championship team from Merrimack also. He is going to the national championships in Indiana uh, this summer and representing the state of New Hampshire and Merrimack in particular. We will congratulate him for his outstanding, outstanding work. Um, at your, at your desk, uh, some materials. As you know, we have a, um, and I'm sure one of you will mention it, a goal setting meeting coming up uh, this Thursday from 9.30 to 2.30. Uh, we put together some uh, preparation materials uh, for you, including the agenda uh, that uh, Primex has uh, suggested. They will be facilitating it again this year. Copy of last year's uh, goal setting summary um, on a spreadsheet of the goals and the accomplishment. Um, the blue shading means the goals were completed, yellow and progress, white is uh, uh, represents that we need to commence work on those. But if you look at the, um, the summary sheet, we've accomplished an awful lot this year. And we're very, very pleased to be able to say that sometimes a lot of goals are not accomplished during the course of the year, but we made a concerted effort across the entire district by everyone to, uh, to make sure that we worked on them and some uh, some brief uh, background materials. Uh, so uh, I think, oh, and the last thing, we are uh, having, after a 20-year hiatus, we're having band camp uh, again this summer. Um, you know, Amy and I met with uh, Bunny Serenito a while back, and we were talking about uh, what, uh, what the kids in band do during the summer. And she said, well, we haven't done anything for quite a few years because I was always told no. And the two of us said, well, now you're being told yes. <laughs> and so uh, looking forward to um, some uh, band building experiences uh, on a Wednesday evening from like 6 to 8 o'clock. Some small group lessons, uh, some, uh, some vocal and chorus work. Um, we'll give you a report on that. We're very excited. We're going to try and involve, even though he has a full-time job during the summer, uh, our new uh, band director also, uh, we've invited him to join you with us, but uh, looking forward to it. And uh, hopefully you'll stop by on the field sometime on a Wednesday evening and listen to what is an outstanding high school band. So, and that is it. And and just to clarify, because there might be confusion, band camp, not to be confused with band camp, because there's a marching band camp, right. and then there's band camp. So mm -hmm. some parents might get confused by that. I'm glad you clarified uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. That's great news. Um, thanks, Bill. Uh, next is Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum from Ms. Amy Doyle. Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to take a minute to thank the students, the parents, staff, teachers, administrators for all of the different end of year celebrations that are happening right now. Um, there's nothing like an end of the year calendar to remind you of all the things that we can pack into about you know, five weeks between art shows and hawk walks and graduations and all of these different opportunities. So it's also a time of year for some um, students that they're nervous about moving on. So I know that um, staff have also been working on transition activities and ensuring that receiving teams um, know what to expect and to um, set students up for success in the fall. So I was so happy to participate in the high school graduation. It was my first one. Um, and it was just amazing to be on the field and to hear the, the band and how they hand out the diplomas. Every um, district has its own traditions and it just seemed like a really terrific event. So congratulations mm -hmm. to everyone. Um, in your packet tonight are a few legislative updates. I just wanted to give you some information about the progress that we're making um, on House Bill 157.1, which is the um, civics instruction requirement. Um, we have done you know, really a terrific job under the um, supervision of Trevor Knight, who's the department head at the social of of social studies at the high school. Um, we've implemented uh, the testing requirements as required by this RSA. Um, and we've also implemented a remediation effort uh, for those students that perhaps didn't pass the test, either the local assessment or the naturalization test on their first try. Uh, so there's more some, some 
more specific information in that memo. I also wanted to just share that we are in compliance with the revised version of RSA 189.11, which is requiring the teaching of cursive handwriting and multiplication facts by the end of grade five. Um, we have our phonics program in grades K to three foundations, which teaches cursive handwriting and our new word study program, um, Spelling Connections also teaches cursive handwriting. And I have plenty of people on hand that can attest to the fact that we teach multiplication facts um, starting probably third grade and we progress monitor it very specifically in, in fifth and sixth grade um, and for those students that need it beyond that. I've also included in your packet um, some fact sheets and uh, reference to RSA 189.11 if you feel like digging into that. It's really great reading. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to take an opportunity to congratulate the Thornton's Ferry School, and Julie's here and can jump in if you have any questions. Um, TFS is one of eight schools in New Hampshire that has been awarded the Leaning into Literacy grant that has been offered by the state. It is a new pilot program. It's a multi-year grant that will provide $50,000 in funding to continue our shift from balanced literacy to a structured literacy framework. There will be intensive focus on foundation skills, building knowledge, and the TFS staff will receive coaching and continue training on the science of reading, evidence-based literacy-based assessments, and all of the materials that are aligned with that shift. Um, congratulations to the TFS team. And um, I will just say, I, was, I saw their application before it went in, and wow, they had really done a terrific job uh, to prove how uh, bringing this opportunity to Merrimack um, would be in the state's best interest, and we're really excited about that. Um, just to anticipate a question you might have, the literacy coordinators, um, so Ginny Calnan at um, Julie's school, and uh, Holly at Michelle's school, and Jeanette at Bonnie's school, they are already planning uh, to ensure that just because it's at TFS, they work very, very closely together, um, and we're going to try to maximize anything that the state will give us uh, to improve our practices across the lower elementary schools. That's all I have for this evening. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to Assistant Superintendent for Business Update. Thank you very much. Um, between Bill and Amy, I just kind of feel like, wow, I don't have like nearly half of what they do. <laughs> but just want to let everybody know um, that uh, we had a conversation with uh, Don, the uh, DPW director. Uh, about uh, the decommissioning of Brentwood. Uh, the utilities are going to be stubbed out at the street, so the sewer, the gas, and everything like that, and the water is going to be stubbed out at the street on McElwain. And uh, today was the first day that uh, the utilities started to be decommissioned inside the building, and so that's we're making a small step towards, the, let's see, a cookout or something like that when... Uh, the building finally comes down. It should be interesting. We'll take some pictures and post it on Facebook. People like to look at stuff like that. And I already talked with uh, Nick LaValle about doing a little video presentation of the destruction of the Brentwood <laughs> property. That'll be a time lapse photography thing, and like you know, stick by stick and whatever. So it's fine. It's it's starting. They were supposed to show up tomorrow, but they showed up today. I've never had a contractor show up early, yeah. you know, on a job. <laughs> it was a little bit surprising, you know, but uh, that's okay. So we're going to be moving on that, and uh, we thank you for your support. And we're also moving forward with uh, the the traffic study, the master plan study with the VHB. We have an initial copy of it uh, right now. I I have it in my possession, and we've talked with VHB a little bit. We need to make make some modifications before we give you those options. And first step we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, the planning and building committee get their, their opinion, and then come to the school board. That's kind of the process. And we're also going to involve the, uh, the town center committee also, because they have a big stake in that whole plan anyway. So that's about it for, for my little corner of the world. So not quite as impressive as Bill and Amy, but, you know, we, we do stuff from time to time. So thank you. I still think you're missing a tremendous fundraising opportunity with the Brentwood <laughs> building. Just get like a sledgehammer, like 10 minutes is a hundred bucks, you know, and just, <clears throat> anyway, it's probably safety concerns there. Um, all right. School board update. Um, I want to just echo um, what Mr. Olson said about um, graduation uh, 
couple weekends ago at the high school was was a great day. We managed to avoid the rain. Uh, it was just, um, really a joy to see that whole community come together uh, to celebrate those guys getting their diplomas. Um, and so it was a, a great day put on by the um, high school administration and, and their whole team over there. Um, and I have also been to many year end celebrations um, in the last uh, couple of weeks um, at many of the different schools. It's been great to get out and see all the different ways that schools celebrate and um, uh, and the ceremonies they have for, as Amy brought up, uh, continuing on as that can be a very anxious time for especially a lot of our little guys, even some of our older guys. Um, so it's nice to see how um, the schools come together for things like that um, to, to kind of limit that anxiety as best they can. So um, it's been a great uh, couple of weeks. This things have, they say, they always say things are winding down, but they like, no. there's so much stuff <laughs> at the end, right? Uh, you're finally starting to come up for air. Um, want to just mention, as Bill said, that we have our goal setting meeting, our second ever goal setting meeting scheduled for this Thursday. Um, the people you see up here will be meeting at the middle school um, to go over what we've done this year uh, and then see where we can improve and what's next on the plate. So we're excited to get together to have those conversations uh, with our, our friends over at Primex um, and hope for another productive meeting. We were we set a lot of goals last summer and we're, you know, maybe we'll get some of them done to see how many are either done or almost done is very, very impressive and a huge testament to the group we have up here and our faculty as well and our staff. So thank you to everybody for all the work you've done this year to really, if you can feel the momentum, you can feel the positive changes happening. Um, and it's, it's all because of you guys and all the work you've done. So thank you for all that. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Uh, student representative update from our new student representative. Okay, so um, student council so far, we haven't even found out our new representatives or our advisors yet. After like Mrs. Dumay and Mr. Hall leaving, we still need to figure it out. And if you guys have any suggestions, we need help <laughs> because we, we need to figure it out. And hopefully the new advisors can give us good connections with all the other students. And also, in addition, class of 2025 is planning to do two, possibly even three fundraisers over the summer and currently are working on confirming them. We have a car wash fundraiser planned nearby the Rapid Refills near Burger King around the dates of July 15th and August 19th. We also have planned to have a fundraiser during the July 3rd Patriotic Concert in the park which starts 6.30 p.m., so be sure to keep an eye out for either of those fundraisers and for our, to support our amazing Class of 2025. That's about it for my update. Excellent. Thank you. All right, uh, moving on to old business and starting with the review of process for policy approval. May I just say what you, uh, explain what you have in your packet there, Yes, Ken. please. We included um, a couple of documents from the New Hampshire School Board Association. Uh, one is sample policy BGB. That is an older version of the policy uh, entitled policy adoption. Uh, goes back a few years. Uh, the most recent uh, version of that has expanded upon just policy adoption and included policy development, adoption, and review. That's sample policy BGAA. So, want to provide that to you because we've had some conversation of late uh, in terms of the process of developing, adopting, and reviewing policies. And uh, this was not intended for any action tonight, but for your review. And we'll, we'll take a look at this at a future meeting and uh, decide how we want to shape the policy in the Merrimack School District. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to Steal your thunder, but I wasn't sure if everyone understood why those documents were in there. <laughs> Steal away. Uh, no, when I when I got the packet, I um, that was my my assumption was that it was taking a look at the process for which we've been reviewing them and possibly making it a little bit more effective. Um, great. Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm really happy to see this in here because um, I've been working with Sandy a lot, as, as you guys know, um, just doing like grammar type edits and, and being a second set of eyes on policies. And I feel like it's really important that we are transparent with 
how we are, what our what our philosophy is behind, or whatever. We're not even our philosophy, but our method. What our method is um, for adopting policies and the the ways that stakeholders can be give input and the ways that we present them in our meetings. And I'm just really really excited to see that we're doing this. Yep. And I was just going to say, like, I think it's really important to look back at how much progress we've made with policies this year. Um, you know, we are focused on upgrading, rewriting, and getting the policies done. And uh, in the past, we've had some very old policies that came before the board. And it seems like this year, we are moving very quickly, but we're getting a lot of policies passed. So we really do appreciate it. And I think streamlining the process and you know how we're doing business and focusing is really helping. And just going along with that, I had sort of a funny um, correspondence with a, a community member who, as we were reviewing um, one of our, I think it was the homeschool policy, uh, they had emailed and said, oh, you know, this really needs to be updated. This really needs to be updated. And I said, funny, you should mention that. And I sent along the link to the updated uh, homeschool policy and they said, all looks well. So um, just again, such tremendous work done with reviewing policies and updating them. Uh, go ahead, Jenna. I just wanted to add, add one specific thing. Um, I love how Naomi uses the word excited when she talks about policies. And I'm excited that Naomi is excited about policies because um, I don't feel exactly that same way. But I do. I do. I, but all that to say, I am very grateful for the work that you and Sandy are doing um, because you you are passionate about that, and that sort of is a a, a very important trait for. To, to have on our board and you have done some really hard work so i appreciate you and appreciate sandy and, and all of you that are also involved in that um i am not as much involved in that and, and that's okay with me and i'm thankful <laughs> i like organizing things and making them clear <laughs> yes i have dubbed naomi the policy queen she is our policy queen <clears throat> all right uh any other comments questions great uh moving on to uh alternative pathways grant miss lori rothos so just um really quickly um we applied for this grant uh, i saw harley hall at graduation uh, the merrimack school district did receive a forty-five thousand dollar grant for, for over three years it's based on a number of kids that um, actually complete the program so we had to go in with you know we're just starting so we're um, very excited, but we're hoping as we start to graduate, people will actually increase that grant, but um, it's a great start and we're very excited to offer this pathway. I think it's gonna be a game changer for our school district getting kids to graduate from high school. Open it up to questions. I actually just wanna say something of clarification, just um, some comments that um, people have made to me that I want to clarify because this is so wonderful. I'm so glad we got this grant. Alternative pathways does not mean easier graduation. Alternative pathways is a recognition that students can learn in a multitude of ways and accomplish the state's requirements for graduation. So because we are pursuing alternative pathways to graduation does not mean that we are making it easier or that we are graduating students who are not ready for the real world we are graduating our students who are highly ready for the real world. It just recognizes that sometimes they can learn in alternative ways, whether that's in a job or an ELO, different ways. And I'm really proud that we're doing this because this is a great way to reduce dropout. Because we know that the income difference between not having a high school diploma and having a high school diploma is huge. And in, getting that diploma is your ticket to the show and opens doors for all kinds of things. So I just wanted to clarify that because there were a number of questions in the public on that. And I am so excited that we have this grant to help us pursue that. I, I just want to piggyback on, off of what you said. I, somebody did mention that same thing to me. And, and I have two additional thoughts. I bumped into somebody in the grocery store this week who um, whose child was graduating and I said oh so-and-so you know so exciting whatever she I said yeah we're really excited you know this they're graduating met I think she said nine of her, their friends are not gra not graduating and I thought what the pandemic 
right, impacted them. So I had the opportunity to say to them, we have this new program and they could come back and finish up if they if they felt like they're in a different place now. That's part of what this Pathways for Graduation will be able to do is to be able to offer that kind of thing to a student who, you know, something happened, whether it be a pandemic, whether it be a sickness or a million other things, and they can come back and they can finish and move forward. And it doesn't have to be you know, I didn't do that. I didn't finish that. They could come back and finish. So there's that. Secondly, um, you know, th there's a student that I know that did an ELO this year. Uh, Merrimack High School doesn't have a theater program. So this student did an ELO to get one theater credit. And to your to your uh, point, um, when the student didn't have enough um, evidence, you know, Mr. Hall sat down with that student and said, hey, this is what you need. You need a couple more things. And then you know, because the standard is here, not here. And so sat with advisors and got that all worked out. And that's an example of what this alternative pathway is. It's it's also filling gaps that maybe we don't have. Like it could be a work experience, but it could be, hey, we don't have theater. There's this way you can get some theater credit as a random example um, be, to honor all the work that you know you do outside of class or whatever. So those are the kinds of things. It's thinking outside the box about what is an educational experience and working with educators that hold those students to high standards through that process. So it's really exciting for the Merrimack School District because it means that we're starting to meet the needs of all learners. And some of our learners are better at learning outside of a traditional classroom. And it doesn't mean we're not holding them to a high standard. I was going to say something, but Jenna said it all. So <laughs> um, yeah, this, it's such an exciting program. And I think it just makes us that much more of a desirable district to be in for sure. Um, great. Any other comments, questions? Um, we are adding one item to old business, just really briefly uh, regarding the 4th of July. Um, I know myself and I think Lori and maybe a few others, Naomi, uh, will be um, joining the 4th of July parade here in Merrimack on, uh, is it Bailey's Towing, the company? The Bailey's, yep. Uh, that will be uh, driving us down. So feel free to wave and we'll wave back and um, it'll be uh, a great day. And uh, give out candy. And candy, <laughs> lots of candy. Yes, don't forget that. Um, so uh, we look forward to seeing the town uh, at the 4th of July parade uh, right out here. Um, and I think that's it for old business. Moving on to new business uh, and the year in review of pre K through six and co curricular activities from our illustrious panel of elementary principals. Good evening, and thank you for having us. As we come to the end of another school year, we reflect on the year and the many exciting parts of this school year. There are countless moments of successes and new learning that we can share with you. However, as a group, we agreed that one of the biggest successes of the year was the addition of extracurricular activities at the elementary school level. I would like to begin by introducing the team here with us tonight. So Bonnie Pancho, principal at Reeds Ferry, Nikki Rowe, principal at J, J Muse. <laughs> I'm Michelle Romain, the principal at Master Cola, and Julie DeLuca, principal of Thorpe. Over the last few years, the elementary schools have discussed adding after school activities. With support from both the budget committee and this board, we added a line to, into our school budgets for the 22 23 school year. As administrators, we met early in the fall to discuss and plan what the extracurriculars activities would look like. We wanted to be similar while still following the passions of the educators and students in our building. Each school ran two four-week sessions over the course of the school year with students attending for one hour each week during those weeks. Educator, educators were given two hours of planning time for each club and a budget for materials. 
We set a maximum number, minimum number of students for each club and offered educators the opportunity to co-facilitate with someone if they chose. This allowed us to increase the number of students who could participate in a club. Any educator in the building, including paraeducators, could be a club facilitator. Once the details were set, we turned it over to the educators. I know you will not be surprised to hear that they were incredibly creative in their offerings. Once activities were solidified, students were given the opportunity to sign up for clubs. I am thrilled to announce that it was an absolute success. In just the first year alone, we had over 765 students participate across the four elementary schools with over 50 educators participating as well. The clubs offered reflected a variety of interests, including, but not limited to, <laughs> cheer club, pickleball, animation, Disney art, knitting, clay club, a Zoom cooking class, basketball, bird watching, chess, and many, many more. Walking through the clubs was a wonderful experience as you observed educators and students sharing what they loved with each other. We couldn't bring you to see the clubs, so we thought we would bring the clubs to you. Please sit back and enjoy this presentation put together by Denise McLaughlin, DLS at Thornton's Ferry, Bethany Taylor, the DLS at J. Muse, Carol Lewis from Reed's Ferry, and Erica McLaughlin Pereira from MES.
but the way to make it the most is that you get to know the love. we did the Susie seedlings, we were planting the plants and learning how to plant them and watching them grow um, and doing stuff like that. We planted a couple plants, we planted a couple fruits, vegetables, and one or two flowers. My favorite part about Susie seedlings is I got to watch the plants grow. Hi, my name is Olivia and I participate in the Time to Give Club. We picked the Nashua Humane Society to donate pet toys and food to. You could also donate one dollar and hang your pet photo at school. I like drawing the posters we hung up at school. setting up a, the bird feeder because now whenever I go to PE, I can look outside and see if there's a bird at the feeder. A fun thing we did is we went into the nature trail uh, back in the woods and it was really cool to see all the birds and uh, them surrounded in their nature. We made paper machés. And we made clay animals. And we made owls and we painted them. Baking with my parents because we got to spend more quality time together. In sprints and zooms, we baked bird bird nests out of pretzels, and we baked muffins and s'mores.
In the clay club, we made these bowls, and you could put your um, first letter of your name in it, like I did. I put an S, and then we made these cups. We did different games each week, and for each week, we did a different type. And one of them was board games, one of them was strategy games, and one of them was card games. My favorite games over the weeks were Guess 10, where one person would hold or see a card, and they would give you yeah, clues to um, to find out that animal, and the other one was velcro darts, where you would throw dart balls that had velcro on them. First you shake it, and then you can breathe while like, the glitter's falling out of it. Hi, my name's Vanessa, and I'm going to teach you some more strategies that we learned in the Minecraft Club. Breathing strategies, yoga, and I'm going to show you a yoga move real quick. This is called Downward Dog. And other things that I read, this is something I love, meeting new kids from other classes. and I wanted to learn more. Uh, we made crepes. We got to make a whole bunch of cool stuff. We watched videos from like movies. We, made, we played super cool games and we got to make this sub catcher that I turned into a French bulldog and it's really cool. My favorite part about French Club is at the end where we got to make cool French Club t-shirts.
interested in owning my own business one day. Um, in the club, we got to make our own business. Um, I made a racing program for kids that wanted to race to learn about racing. Hi, I'm Caitlin. And I'm Jocelyn. I joined a skateboard club because I thought it would be fun and exciting. I joined a skateboard club because I thought it would be a good experience and I could make new friends. So basically, in a skate room club, she would give you papers and you would have to figure out the clues to get to the next level. And you couldn't move on to the next paper until you got all the questions correct. It was cool that they could make a kind of skate room on the computer and then we'll do it together. discover a new hobby and I've been wanting to try crocheting for a long time but I never thought like I always thought it'd be too difficult and when I saw the crochet club at JMU's I instantly just wanted to join because I thought it'd be really interesting and fun to try. Some of the things we did during this year's um, crochet club are we made necklaces and we also we made pom-poms and blankets favorite thing that we made would have to be the blankets just because it was one that took like almost a longer time and took more commitment and I really enjoyed that challenge and I think it was really fun. We made tiny trading cards and um, we got to do free time a lot so I was able to make some cool stuff. I painted a window. I painted snowflakes for the winter time. And we also did stop motion art. And we painted Christmas tree, like snow paintings. And I got to make a piggy out of circles. <laughs> Thank you. We hope you we hope you enjoyed this small glimpse of the extracurricular activities at MES, RFS, TFS, and JMUs this year. We would like to thank you for your support of this addition to programming and welcome any questions you may have. Open it up. Well, I'll start. Um, <clears throat> well done. So good. Uh, and just a huge like there's so many great things to say about it. Um, you know, the the creativity from your staff and coming up with ideas and different clubs and organizations. Um, you know, this is where community building happens when you see those students outside of the classroom and, and they start making those connections with maybe students they don't see every day and those teachers they don't see every day. Um, you know, you start, you really start to see some relationships form there. Um, this is the kind of education that doesn't show up on any test scores. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that could ignite a, a lifelong passion for these kids. Uh, I mean, in that video alone, you don't know what kind of impact you're going to have uh, 5, 10, 15 years down the road. Um, and so, you know, with all of these different offerings, you may have changed a life with one of these kids. So it's, I love seeing stuff like this. And um, this is the kind of stuff that um, I, I, I want more of. <laughs> it's just such a great opportunity for so many kids. So thank you very much. Well, can I just make yeah. one comment? First of all, thank you to the principals for being aggressive during the budget process and understanding the importance of co-curricular activities. As, as, you, as you just said, the passion of staff meets the passion of children. And you are exactly correct when you said uh, these things are not measured by a test. That's where children have their interests uh, or they're exploring new interests staff have a chance to get to to express their passion 
and we appreciated the conversations we had with the principals and the assistant principals during the budget process because we, we all recognized the need. They took aggressive steps in budgeting. Uh, Matt certainly was instrumental in, in budgeting those monies, and you were instrumental in, in supporting those activities, you and the budget committee. So we can't thank you enough because great things have happened with those programs as we just saw. We're going to continue. And we're going to build upon those for next school year also. Please do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that's a tough one to follow. Uh, but we're going to try. Uh, next item is review of 2021 Youth Risk Behavior Survey results uh, from Ms. Fern Seiden. Uh, thank you so much for having me um, tonight to talk about the 2021 Youth Risk Behavior Survey. So please note that this um, information comes out two years after it was done. So um, we still have a lot to learn from it, but we have to keep that in mind. It is a shift from in um, mood from what we just experienced, but we can hold those two things um, together and actually see what, what we just learned is very hopeful and, as you said, is is very much building the protective factors that we want our kids to have from very early on. And I would say that um, the Youth Risk Behavior Survey, which we'll be learning about in a moment, um, really is something that's it's done by our high schools. It's completed by our high school students, but it's owned by a whole community. And so I want to kind of bring that to bear here that it's owned K-12 and it's owned by our whole community because it's it's really about how we care for our students overall. So um, let's get started. So it, this is a, just a little bit about the Youth Risk Behavior Survey. It's a, a Center for Disease Control Survey. Um, it's been done um, for quite some time. There have been over 5 million students surveyed since it began and it's anonymous and voluntary. Uh, it really is, from, a, from the 10,000-foot um, view, it really is part of a nationwide effort to understand health-related behaviors that contribute to the leading causes of death and poor health among youth and adults. In New Hampshire, it's a partnership between New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Education, and it really can give us information that can help with our planning. Um, students answer um, in this version, there were 103 questions, uh, and just so we understand, it does change over time as risks change. For instance, vaping was not something that was um, asked about when it first began, so um, it does continually change as context changes. Um, in 2021, when this was taken um, by our students, there were 914 students who participated. They represented 78% of the population. We want to make sure that we understand that that means that this does not represent 100% of the population. So these are raw numbers. Um, it's still enough students that can give us some really good information, but we want to understand that it has that mathematical limitation. The state data that we're compared to is a large enough sample size to um, offer scientific survey methods. And in 2021, there were so few people in our region, or so few students uh, surveyed, that there was no regional data that could be offered as comparison. Whereas in other years, you could compare um, Merrimack with the region and the state. Um, I do want to just start off by saying this is a very high level overview. There are, you know, it's a very long report with lots of information and um, I will be talking about some sensitive things tonight. So just um, be prepared here because the information is difficult and um, if you're at home watching, you may want to watch the recorded version of this later. Um, if you have young children um, in the home listening. 
Um, so in 2021, what I think the biggest takeaway from this, or one of the big takeaways, is we're really seeing this through the we're seeing through the lens of COVID. We're seeing the student experience of their reflections back on most of the questions are like in the last 30 days, in the last year. Um, so this is really getting a sort of snapshot of their um, experience of COVID. So you see a lot in the data that's, you know, in interesting, like there's less in-person experiences that might prompt electronic bullying, but there's also more use of technology that could prompt more uh, electronic bullying or change that. There's um, less access to drugs and alcohol, so I'll show you later how much that impacted our students' exposure during that year. Um, and obviously, we all know the story about the increased stressors that our youth experienced and how that impacted their mental health. Um, just so we understand, this, this all will be posted online, so you'll have a chance to dive more deeply into all the different categories. There are so many. I'm not covering all of this. It would take at least an hour to go through um, and provide a, a, an overview of every single category. Um, but I am going to kind of give you a high level overview of some of the things that really stood out. Um, these are the categories that are covered. You'll learn more. I would put this little snapshot up here so you could see what you'll see online. You'll see how it compares school, no information for region, and New Hampshire, and you'll see how um, it can take you through if the information was there from 2013 until um, 2021. And it breaks it down by female and male and then takes you through the grade levels, which also shows us and helps us understand a lot about what happens between ninth and 12th grade. So the story in New Hampshire, just sort of a big picture overview, is that was there was a promising reduction in drug and alcohol use. Obviously, there was less access during the, that one year. So it's an interesting, you'll see how interesting that big decline is. Um, I think it's important to understand that that's one year that students did not experiment, and that has some impact on children, um, for sure. Um, Mental health concerns continue to rise. And I just want to put it in the perspective that in 2018 19, already we were seeing nationally the 22% of kids between thir three and 18 had a mental or emotional behavioral health disorder. So we were really up there, right? That was a really, um, we were already seeing the rise of mental health issues. The YRBS data shows a worsening of that trend. Um, you know, with especially an increases of depression. And I just, you may have heard in the news about this, but um, in Merrimack, for instance, females were much more at risk at 57.5%. Um, we understand why the pandemic really, you know, had an impact. Um, and I don't want to take our eyes off also the impact of the opioid epidemic in this state and in many states around the country. Um, we have many students who are impacted. Um, just as I anticipate that people will say, you know, how did we do in comparison with New Hampshire? I would say that for the most part, our numbers, though uh, limited uh, sample size, not representing 100% of our students, it's tracks with New Hampshire almost across the board. There are only just a few questions where I even saw a 5% uh, variation from the numbers from the state. Um, and so that was pretty limited in there they are up there. One of the things that I think from a point of view of a school person, we were less likely to see public um, messages about avoiding substances. Um, and so that's an easy low piece of low hanging fruit that we can get at. Um, I think the two in pieces of information that I thought were really also going to help us greatly is strengthening relationships between students and trusted adults because we saw in these two questions some important information students who never or rarely felt able to talk to an adult um, in the family or another caring adult. So most students were able to do that, you know, at, um, but there were 33% who felt they couldn't. And then the other piece about talking about difficult feelings was even higher. And that's about making sure that we break down that stigma and support help seeking um, skills for, for students. Um, at that time, we know people were very isolated, and so it was a very difficult time. 
So now I'm going to dive right into a few of those high level topic areas that are of interest. There are so many more again, and I don't want to minimize the importance of this report, but in light of uh, time restraints, I want to, I'll just cover some of them. So bullying, obviously we saw a decrease in bullying on school property. <laughs> Um, but we also saw um, some interesting trends in electronic bullying, uh, and we see that um, the difference between males and females, 29% of females versus 9.5% of males, and you saw where it increases in 10th grade. Um, I thought it was important to under see that students generally feel safe going to school, and that even back in 2019, 7.4%. Um, that was really good news that most people feel safe, but I always look at that number and just say it does represent some students who um, don't feel safe going to school, and we want that number to be zero. <laughs> um, so substance and tobacco use, I'm combining these two um, sections of the data. Um, most of this information either got better or stayed the same, and we see that uh, marijuana and alcohol use um, were the highest uh, drugs to be um, used or substances. Um, and another part of the data that I think is important is that between freshman and senior year, we see that increase. Uh, finally, I would say that when you look into this data, there's a lot ma many questions about perception. And I was, it was heartening to see that students perceive their peers and the adults in their lives to disapprove of substance and um, tobacco use. So in that case, that's a very good public health measure to know that, um, you know, the nor it's being normed as something to not be doing. Even though people are participating, it, there's a norm out there that kind of probably is a protective factor. Um, I just wanted to show you a percent of students using marijuana in the last 30 days. This is an example of what you'll see. And you see that big drop from 2019 to 2021. And I look at that as one more year of not having marijuana um, impacting brain development and, relation, and relationship development. Um, you also see, though, from ninth to 12th grade what happens. So we can really get a sense of where our health programs and our extracurricular programs and all those things we do to engage students really can make a difference. The the ELOs, as you were saying, um, a lot of a lot of the supports can help this. So mental health is the big picture that we you know that's where a lot of the press around. If you look in the news around this, um, we saw it was very important. Um, uh, you know suicide comes up, there are many questions about suicide ideation, planning, um, thinking about suicide, et cetera. Um, and we do see, again, the spread um, of students and um, the largest number of females and then also of seniors. So this is a closer look at some of the questions that are in, um, within this category. And it's just very important for us to understand that we need to keep our eye on this very closely. Um, because obviously this is you know critical for for the work that we're doing with students kids can't learn if they are depressed um if they're they need help when they are feeling um those difficult feelings and feeling ho hopeless or helpless so um and we see again where we can target uh females especially uh, in merrimack So there are many other YRBS categories, and these ones stood out for me. Um, kids need more sleep, and of course, COVID affected all our sleeps. I don't, I didn't sleep very well during COVID, but students especially didn't sleep very well. Um, so I would want to say that um, if your child is having difficulty sleeping, that um, mental health problems like uh, depression and anxiety can actually um, be ca caused by a lack of sleep. It can actually mirror that. So when you get to the root cause, a lot can be done by supporting good sleep hygiene. So it's really important to get after sleep. 
And that means taking the screens away at night sometimes, um, because that oftentimes is when the highest use of, of um, screens is happening. And I heard one psychologist say nothing good happens online on a screen between uh, 3 and 5 a.m. or 1 and 3 a.m. or whatever. So um, really, really important that we address screens because that also, as you know, just recently came out from the Surgeon General that um, high use of screen time is impacting mental health in this country. And especially if you circle back to that data about um, the, uh, the bullying for girls online, we know that there's all these kind of factors that kind of spin out from that. Um, texting while driving, that was something that um, I guess I shouldn't have been surprised by, but 41% of students. Uh, and uh, that data goes way up for seniors because, of course, they're driving more. Probably, like, you know, obviously freshmen aren't even driving yet. So uh, that was important for us to be working with our teens to understand just how critical it is to put the phone down. Um, and also the, the relationship data, I think, was very important to look at. Um, and to keep supporting. I know our high school counseling team um, really works hard to promote um, learning about and our health uh, program, promoting self and healthy, safe and healthy relationships for young people. So this is this was an important piece of data for us. 32.2% of those who dated reporting that someone tried to control or emotionally hurt them in the past 12 months. Finally, I thought this, I think this was a new question this year, student about student voice and we saw a high percentage of our students feeling like they could help decide what happens in their school. And that's a really, really important piece of data. It's very empowering. And um, it's, a, I think, a very health, a sign of a very healthy um, school community or climate, one, one piece of evidence for that. Um, there's a lot that we do across the district. We just heard about prevention when we talked about extracurricular activities, honestly, and I so appreciate your comment that you don't know that passion and purpose and how we plant that from the earliest stages um, that is protective. Um, we are working hard to uh, develop a multi-tiered system of support to make sure that kids are getting universal uh, secondary and tertiary supports for all of these um, mental health and emotional health needs um, and so much more that we are doing in the district. Um, I would point out all the work being done on academic engagement is very important. ELOs, um, giving kids hope really matters. So I think that's, uh, and I wanted to also bring up that our vision of a learner, I think anchors us in how we kind of shape these, these supports that we're offering students. Um, we're we are also trying to get us, we are getting a student assistance program counselor and a high school social worker uh, this year, which is exciting, and this coming year. Um, and so that's going to, I think, really fill out our mental health supports at the high school. And finally, I just, um, just to put this out there right now, these are, as we enter the summer, it's really important to know your supports. Um, 988 is the number to call if you would need immediate mental health support. And also, if you just need to talk to somebody about information, resources, I can't say enough about the, the people answering the telephone at NAMI New Hampshire for the information and resource line. You will find everything that you need there. Um, they will help you step by step to get what you need. So I would offer those two. We will be, these are links, so we'll make sure that you have um, plenty of information online, the documents to support this, as well as the report itself. So that's my high, very high level overview. <laughs> <laughs> sure, let's open it up. Go ahead, Lori. So um, I just think all this information is just really important. And even though some of it's a very alarming for us, and um, when we look at depression, anxiety, uh, did you think about suicide? Um, we know that we have a lot of work to do. Um, I really appreciate all of the work on prevention. Um, I know like these are the interventions. These are, you know, if we have a student that that's in trouble, this is what we're going to do. And, um, and then again, just at the state level, having treatment, that's a, a big thing. And that's where we need like our state reps. We need to be able to, if we have a student in crisis to be able to really help them. Um, 
I think I said this last year, I'm going to say it again, when, you know, going back to 1981, I was a brand new health teacher and I taught the mental health unit and I put a bulletin board up and where to get help, you know, if you are suicidal and the assistant principal said, you need to take that down. Mm-hmm. You can't have that up in your classroom. Like we don't talk about that. And I was like, oh, oh, okay, but we've come a long way where we're more transparent and we're willing to face these issues that we need to face. It's actually very important to share with the public that asking uh, somebody if they've been thinking about suicide is not going to plant the idea. So that's really one of the biggest barriers. And so um, the vision that we all share in this field is that everybody would become comfortable in learning how to have that conversation and not be fearful of it because it's it's actually worse to not have the conversation than to have it. And that's that's done, that's research based information. So um, yeah, it's it's very, very, very important. So we do appreciate all the work that you do and you're doing a great job. So thank, thank you. you. So I'm surprised the CDC did not include a question about social media. We know now, I mean, Tufts has been doing the work for seven years on the impact of mental health for teenagers, particularly girls, uh, in, in regards to use of social media. Um, the statistic is uh, if you spend more than two hours a day on social media, you increase your risk of depression by two and a half times. Um, so to what extent, in particular in middle school, because, um, you know, that's, that's where they're most vulnerable to social media influence. To what extent do we address social media and really reducing the use of it in our middle school and high school and to our parents? Well, I'm, I know that a lot of this is covered in health class. Luckily, in seventh and eighth grade, there's health class is really robust. And so um, I know they do a phenomenal job in digging into that. And I do believe that the away for the day policy in the middle school, I think any time you can put that phone away, it's a way and it makes a difference. It's one less minute, one less hour, you know, it's important. So I really appreciate that very much about um, the middle school right now. And um, I know it's made a difference um, in our, for our students. Um, And I do think, I mean, in May, we actually, that was the theme of the mental health awareness month was uh, screen why a screen how impact of social media on mental health and we offered a lot like weekly almost weekly um, opportunities for parent engagement around this topic Um, we had a community book read and we gave 30 books to um, we got a small grant to purchase books and have the the author visit a book called screenwise which i would highly recommend it's a fantastic uh, book that offers parents a way to navigate that's um, realistic. And, you know, because that's, I think, the d- very difficult piece. But we do have to understand that it's, it's really, really is dangerous to have it be un- unfettered or uncontrolled. We have to have sort of a, a strategy um, as families. So, um, yeah, that was a major topic area that we covered. Uh, of, we had at least three or four events about that, including having the Merrimack PD come. Um, We're still trying to build, um, you know, support for, you know, having parents attend, Um, but we will keep at it because we can't do this alone. Um, The social media piece, we have got to raise student awareness and, um, and family awareness about the importance of this. And I thought those events were were awesome opportunities. And we do. We need to keep chipping away because I agree, as a mom of six kids, sometimes you don't want to have the fight, but this is something worth fighting over. Yeah. And um, I show into my junior class the documentary Social Dilemma, mm. which explains the business and the um, manipulation that social media is trying to do to customize things for yeah. you to stay on it longer and those kinds of things. And, it's, and hearing from the people who developed Facebook, Google, Snapchat, all of those, and to see how they've walked away and how they don't even let their own children and teens have social media is just eye-opening for students. And um, it's, just, it's just fascinating. And I find it interesting, there's like 40 school districts suing social media companies right now 
for the mental health crisis that social media has yeah. um, taken on their students. So I think people are now really we're getting there. To, we're getting there, but yeah. yes, absolutely. And I do know they show that film in our health class yeah. um, in the high school. I do also. I, we also showed in our middle school. We showed the new Screenagers, which is about the second the new the second Screenagers, and it's about this topic. So that was good. We showed that to the kids, and we offered it to families as well. Yeah. Hi. Hi. So I just wanted to say a couple things. First of all, looking at this um, question slide, I wonder if there's a way, and maybe this exists somewhere and I just don't have it. As the parent of three teenagers, there, here's the one thing I know is like when you hit, in, when you hit into a crisis or you're having like something big comes up, unless you have those things right at your fingertips, then you're panicking, you're calling whoever you might know. I wonder if there's a way we can get like a magnet that just has this information and it may, we make sure that all our families have it. So it's on the refrigerator. So like when I need to, to go to urgent care, I look at the magnet on my refrigerator and I go, oh, yeah. they're open till eight. Okay, we can't go today or whatever. If I had this, I mean, I didn't, I'm an SEL interventionist. You feel like, I feel like I should know that number right there. I don't. Like that NAMI New Hampshire number, that wouldn't have been one as a parent that if I was having a crisis at home, I would go, oh, I know where I can call. But if it was if it was given to me, you know, maybe and an, you know the Merrimack School District logo, and we have this, and we have this, mm. it's it's a simple thing. It's not going to solve the world's problems, but it is going to have this information that's right here that could help families um, write it right on their refrigerator or wherever they stick it. Um, just a thought when I'm looking yeah. at it. As a parent of three teenagers, I don't know that I would necessarily. I probably could come up with a 988 quickly, but I never would have known that NAMI New Hampshire. And if you're saying that it's fabulous, let's get that information in quick, usable fashion. Um, the only other thing I wanted to say was um, I love what you were saying about student voice. And, you know, it's it's great for us to have this information. It's great for us as adults to have this information. But I love the idea of student voice, like getting kids to see this information, absorb it and say, what students, what can we do about this in high school? I think a, a great place to start might be with like the SAD club, Students Against Destructive Decisions. That's, mm -hmm. this is information that they as a club could be looking at and saying, hey, these are the things that us and our peers are dealing with. What can we do throughout the year? I mean, that is what their club is about. They do the mock crash and that's cool. And it, it definitely has to do with texting while driving and drinking while driving and some of those other things. But I don't, just, that's just a thought I had. Like to be for us to know this and to act on it is one thing. To get a group of students involved in saying how do we help our peers and ourselves with these things that we're facing is even more powerful in my opinion. So I, I just would think that was a great couldn't idea. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of places doing a lot of work with peer to peer because that's what how teenagers. That's yeah. you know their most. That's the most important method to um, help make change. Um, and so I like, you know, there are several student advocacy, you know, voice groups up there and would love to see more with peer to peer support groups and getting training in that we had one training a couple of years ago that was um, supported by the Promising Futures grant um, for with um, the Teen Institute that does but it needs a lot of support to to maintain that over time, but that is um, a model that's used quite frequently. There's a NAMI, NAMI has a NAMI Connect training program for students and it requires, but it re there's a lot that it requires a lot of, um, like it requires at least 12 teachers to be behind it and get trained. Mm -hmm. And so with, with some work, this could be, this could really happen, but it's very, very powerful and probably the best approach to take to really do prevention work around this mental health work. Yeah. Thank you. So at one point in time, there was a um, committee for years, the Project Safeguard Committee, that actually did a magnet. I'm sure Sandy Swanson probably still has it, you know, but um, Matt probably has one too. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it really was like, it was a group of parents and educators and they came together and they looked at this information and then as a parent group with administrators, they raised money and they did things like that because, you know, they, they, um, they saw the results. They actually could share the results. I know um, 
going to the students. I know the health teachers do use this, but it's like it wouldn't be valuable for a, a, a 12th grader because they get health in 10th grade. So I, I, I like that point, like at least they're using it, but you know, how can we do it? But maybe looking at, you know, the project safeguard model and um, getting people that to back together to help do things to let the community know it was, you know, they, they met monthly, um, a lot of the community resources, uh, in the community came to those meetings to talk about like NAMI would come, you know, um, you know, a lot of greater Nashua resources would come and Matt could probably tell us more, but. Yeah, it was, it was fairly well represented with a cross section of school people. I think the police were involved. Everybody was involved with that. It was a lar large organization and it went on for a number of years and then it just kind of, uh, I don't know, just just came to an ending point for whatever reason, but it it was something that that the entire district was involved with. I mean, Marge used to go to all those meetings as the superintendent, and so yeah, it was something big. In MTSSB, that would be the community management team, so it would be kind of interesting to. It does fit into that model so well. Yeah, and I'll just um, I'll add. You know, we've had great discussions tonight about um, the improvements we've, we're making to our literacy program and our co-curricular programs. And none of that really matters if we can't take this, oops, take this information and use it to better our students' experiences here. And because um, as you just said, students can't learn if they're stressed out. So <clears throat> um, there's a lot of information on PAC here. I spent an hour going through it the other night and I still don't feel like I scratched the surface on it. So I commend you for, for taking this information and processing it and bringing it back to our staff to find ways to develop programs and systems for our students to um, be successful. It's a lot of work for sure, but um, I think I speak for everyone where we support it 100%. So thank you so much. Questions, comments? May I just say uh, there's not a better person to analyze and utilize and, and bring improvements to our school district in Fern. And um, you see this in the quality of the presentation, the quality of, of her analysis, which is just pretty much the tip of the iceberg in terms of the data that's in that report. And, and thank you to all of you for the excellent comments and uh, ideas and questions. I actually want to say one more thing. So again, I work in SEL. So uh, my the pe people that I work with are on phone calls with the DOE and talking about um, SEL and, and, and mental health, which is all these MTSSB support throughout. And um, it was really funny. I got a random text from my boss the other day saying, I was on a call with the DOE and all they did was rave about Merrimack. <laughs> she said, I thought you might want to know. And I thought, that was really nice because they were saying what wonderful things are happening in Merrimack coming from, you know, the people at the DOE. That's pretty exciting to hear. So thank you for everything you do. Well, thank you so You're much. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right. I'm going to, I don't, if I do this, what happens? We'll find okay. out. Okay. Put this <laughs> off so you can continue. All right. Thank you right. so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, it's a real roller coaster, ups and downs. And uh, now we go back up. Uh, discussion of Chief Educational Officer Olson's performance. Um, and I'll I'll start. Um, we have, I've been teaching for about it's my seventeenth year. I just wrapped up, uh, and I've gotten a chance to work with a lot of superintendents over the years. Uh, and I've worked with a lot who say a lot of things and don't do many of them um, and having spent the last few years working with Mr. Olson has been a true joy because he is who he says he is. Um, he walks the walk, he talks the talk, um, he's, he's transparent, he's patient, he's supportive, he's fair, he's compassionate, he's got a vision for the district, he's got a plan, he's involved. Um, I don't think you would find a single staff member in this district who hasn't had a conversation with him. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing because he wants to know what's going on in the classrooms. Um, parents with concerns, he meets with them. He talks with them. Um, it's, it's 
evident in the movement and the progress that's been made in the last few years. Um, the folks up here can only take so much credit. A lot of it has been uh, because of the great relationship we've had with him. Um, <clears throat> I, I have nothing but glowing positive things to say. It's been truly a joy um, seeing him work, talking to the uh, folks in the community, talking to our staff um, who feel supported, who feel like they have a true leader. Um, and it's, it's been great. It's been great having you here, Bill. Open up, go ahead, Lori. So a little bit about the uh, evaluation process. We um, ask our um, superintendent to do a self-evaluation, and then we used a national evaluation standards for all superintendents of schools, um, which is evidence-based and research-based. Um, again, the, uh, the board, uh, last year uh, got together, we did a goals meeting. Um, all of our goals are in pro process or finished and completed. And um, so um, we, we feel that we have a distinguished leader and we feel like our school district's going in the right direction. And we're very proud um, of our entire administrative staff, um, but especially our superintendent of schools. Well, I'll go. I'll go ahead and go next. I think. I think. Um, you know, as a parent with kids at multiple levels, you hear a lot about what people think about the school district, especially once you're on the school board. They like to tell you at every school event or <laughs> sporting event or <laughs> social event. Um, and there has been a shift. You know, there, there's been a shift from we don't know, we're not sure, we think things could be going in the wrong direction too wow, I really see a difference. And so I think that's the direction a lot of people in town were, were hoping that it would go. And I just want to say that um, that you've done a great job at lead leading this district out of the pandemic, out of, um, you know, just a, a time that was really unstable with a lot of staff turnover and a lot of um, uncertainty. And I think you've inspired the confidence of the staff um, students and, and community members that have really felt like you are putting, you and, and your whole team are putting together, uh, really focused on improving our district and looking at the things we do well and making sure we keep them excellent and then looking at the things where we need to improve and making sure we work really hard to get them where they need to be. And um, your leadership and experience has been invaluable to us and I'm thankful every day that you're here. Thank you. One of the things that I have really enjoyed about working with you, Bill, is that you give honor where honor is due. You are genuinely and authentically praiseworthy of your leadership team, of administration, faculty, and staff in the district. You don't take credit that is not yours, and you give away credit that is to people who were involved in the process. And that shows true humility. And only a man of great character can have true humility. So I have appreciated working with you on that, especially because we've asked you to do a lot of stuff these two years. And you have accomplished those things. And even the things that you felt had room for improvement, we, we were thrilled with your process in those things. So uh, I have nothing but positives to say. And I just want to say this, for those of you who've watched the board meetings for years and years and years, we genuinely feel this way. I genuinely have no constructive feedback. It's not just being fluffy because we're in public. That's genuinely how I, how I feel. I think you're doing an A plus job. And we are so, so grateful that you are here. Thank you. Um, ditto. <laughs> um, I actually really like what you said, Lori, about how this is, this is, this is really, this is how we feel. This is, um, you're, you're great to work with, um, all of the things everybody else said, and you're also, you don't shy away from the hard conversations and the hard decisions either. I think we've, we've, I've heard a lot of praise and that makes it sound like this is all easy and this is not easy. Um, and you're, you, you do a hard job and you do it well. Thank you very much. May I just say it is, it's an absolute 
pleasure and, and privilege to work in, in Merrimack and, and to work for you. Um, you know, I've always felt uh, wherever I've worked, and particularly here also, that we have a partnership. We're not in competition. We're, we're in a partnership focusing on the needs of children, whether they're three or 103 in terms of, uh, you know, some of our of the colleagues I've worked with in the past, we actually had a graduate in a former district that was 95 years old that uh, received a diploma. And um, and that's the thrill of, of the job, is we work together to make great things happen for kids. Now, I, I will say this, picking up on something you said, uh, Lori, I don't deserve, I deserve some credit. But the people to the left of me here, we have best assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction. We have the best finance director. And at home, I'm sure watching, we have the best HR director. I could not and could never ask to work with better people than Amy, Matt, and Melissa. They are absolutely superb. And I, I don't mean anything short of that. They are among the best that I've ever worked with. And they, they make it a delight to come to work every single day because we're all of that same orientation, trying to make Great things happen for children. Okay, we, we don't need to be praised every day. We don't need to have our names in the paper and, and toot our own horns. Those things happen organically through staff believing in us, trusting us, respecting us, because we trust and respect and believe in them. Just like we ask our staff to believe in our students, we believe in all of our staff members also. And um, I... I I can't tell you. It's, it's very difficult to convey to you how much I enjoy coming to work every day to work with Amy, Matt, and um, and Melissa. No, I'm just talking about the central office, obviously. But, you know, you saw the great members of our elementary leadership team tonight, middle school, high school, and our staff who are in the trenches every day. That's where the reputation of the school system, any school system, evolves from. And so thank you. I, I, I hope it's been a Two, two years of stability and focus. And that's, that's what I came here for. That's why I enjoyed the challenge because I, I'm not sure that that was in evidence previously. And um, that diminishes the effectiveness of any organization. And you, you've seen the impact of Amy. You've seen the impact of Matt. You've seen the impact of Melissa in the central office and the great things that they're accomplishing. And so... It's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and we're not going to let you off the hook that easy because the reason those folks you just mentioned work so hard and do so well is a reflection of your leadership. Yeah. So thank you again. I want to just, I, I would be remiss if I didn't kind of. <laughs> we need to hear from you, Matt. Yeah, because um, I've, I've, I've been here for a, a very long time. But you saw, you saw an evidence of something that Bill made happen right here at this meeting that I think is really, really, really significant. Because I remember the conversation. I remember we were all sitting around the table at JMU's talking to Nikki, and we had the um, elementary school principals, and we were talking about co-curricular activities for the kids. And Bill thought that was a terrific idea. It was like right away, it was a terrific idea. Well, let's put a budget to it. Let's put some numbers to it. Let's make it happen. I like this. Let's flesh it out. Let's take a chance. Let's see if we can actually put it in the budget, get people to look at it, value it, vote for it, and just move it forward. So that's what we've done. Not a lot of huge expenditures, but expenditures that matter in a targeted area mm -hmm. that moved us forward that are worth 10 times more than the money we spent on them. You know, so that, that's the, the wisdom that this gentleman brings to us. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. And I will give you that salary increase. Thank you. I was, I was, I was... <laughs> I'm, re I'm redoing my kitchen bill, so I, I'm a little short. Thank you. And I just like to add, as a new central office person, you know, to come in and work with someone like Bill has just been terrific. You know, it, it's great for someone like me that I try to be the same person I am wherever I am in the world. And he's very much like that. You know, when you had said what you see is what you get, that is true. Whether we're, you know, talking about having chicken from the gas station or he's talking about an $85 million budget, you know, he is like the same person. And so that's, those are both true stories. <laughs> So thank you for that. Yeah. You have to try the chicken from the gas station. <laughs> you heard it here first. 
Thank you so much. Bill. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving on to review of athletic director job description. Excuse me. I'm sorry for uh, not having my mic on. Uh, we presented these to you to review over the next few weeks, and we will take action on them uh, at that time. Some of these, uh, in some of these categories, we've had no job descriptions over the years. As you know, uh, we're not only involved in in policies, in terms of revising or bringing new policies forward, which are, is extraordinarily important. But we need to do a lot of work. And Melissa has been doing an outstanding job, and Amy and the leadership team, uh, Matt and others, in terms of uh, developing either revised or updated or new job descriptions where, where none existed. Um, as you know, we're in the process of um, trying to find a new athletic director. Um, and that search is, is ongoing. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that we had really a, a true reflection of what we were expecting of the athletic director. We, for the first time, uh, to my knowledge, uh, will have a central registration process for parents so that if they have three, four, five kids, they don't have to go to two or three different schools. Um, we will have uh, that person housed in the student services building across the street from our office. Uh, that is a position that we put in the budget, as you know, and you, and you supported. Uh, one of the benefits of that position also is that we'll have real-time information in terms of uh, registrations of students. Not only new students coming in, but equally as importantly, who is unenrolling and moving out of town. Uh, so the, um, that's also important for us to know. Uh, sometimes there's, there's, I've worked in districts in the past where there's been a little bit of lag between registrations and the reporting of those because people are on vacation during the summer. Well, this is a 12 month uh, year job and um, I think we'll have more real time information. I want, I want to make it clear that the administrative assistants in the schools have been, been doing an outstanding job I've just found from experience over the years that centralizing that process um, pays dividends to us. Um, we'll also, through that registration process, try to make sure that parents understand the benefits if they qualify for, for applying for free and reduced price lunch because some of our aid, as you know, is predicated upon that count. And so it's important that we be consistent in providing that, uh, that message. Uh, we've updated the director of school counseling position. Uh, Amy and I had a, an excellent meeting with Kay Colbert this morning, Steve Clare, and, and Jill Hanlon at the high school to talk about uh, the responsibilities, upcoming and enormous responsibilities of that position. We wanted to make sure that that was an updated job description. We've reconstituted the interventionist position at the middle school into a changing the title to the dean of students uh, at the middle school to deal with behavioral issues, with to deal with the multi-tier system of supports and, and with students uh, to to implement um, a little more effect effectively the collaborative problem-solving approach uh, in terms of trying to understand, not only dealing with discipline, but trying to understand what's going on in the life of a child so that we can try and make that impactful difference. Um, and uh, we have updated, uh, with Amy's uh, help certainly, uh, not only with this one, but with others, the review of the reading interventionist uh, job description. So not for action tonight, but if you read through them, develop your questions, comments, our, at our very next meeting, we'll consider all of them and see where we want to go with them, okay? Questions? Thank you. Yeah, some of our, I just, uh, I have to tell you that uh, when I first started here, some of our job descriptions, some of our policies, now I'm dating myself, uh, were printed with the old mimeograph machines. So some of them date back to the 70s and, and 80s. And so we, we're we going to keep working at it. And we're working aggressively. Uh, everyone's doing a great job at uh, policies and also job descriptions. And we're getting there. 
And so thank you for your support in allowing us to make these uh, changes and upgrades. Great. And just again, going back to Bill's ability to communicate, that's his way of saying these are all screwed up and we need <laughs> to fix them. And he said it in the nicest way possible. Um, and he's right. Some of these, I'm reading the description here. Some go back to the eighties, some of these job descriptions. So absolutely time for an update and an overhaul. Great. Thank you. Um, moving on to policies, second review of fund balances, the DIA. Um, as in the past, um, I do want to mention that these policies have been reviewed by our legal counsel with the edits that you see. Um, and uh, I don't believe we've had any comments on those that have already been published for comment, but, um, you know, uh, they're at these various stages, the second re review for the first two and the first reading of the student transportation. So I, I guess if there's a motion to be made, um, I would recommend waiving the first reading of the student transportation services policy, since that's a new one uh, to the meeting. Do we have a motion to waive the first so reading? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Yep. Second for Jenna. All those in favor? Aye. Passes five zero zero. First reading. First reading is waived. So we we haven't to this point in time. We have not had any comments on the fund balance policy nor the wellness uh, policy. I would suspect probably less likely to have a f comments on fund balance compared to wellness, but uh, haven't had any comments on 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 either. Great. Any questions? Discussion. Moving on to approval of minutes for the June 5th, 2023 school board meeting. We have a motion to accept. I second. Oh, you want to first? I'm going to make a motion. Oh, I make a motion to accept the June 5th, 2023. Lori makes the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Abstain. Passes three zero two. Moving on to consent agenda, educator resignations. There are two resignations for you to consider tonight. The first is assistant principal Alicia Hansen Pru from Master Cola Elementary School has submitted her resignation. Um, Alicia is moving on to become a principal in the Conval School District. The second resignation is for Brianna Durand, who is finishing her first year as the language arts coordinator at Merrimack Middle School. She's returning to uh, a classroom position, um, and both of those letters, as you see in your there in your packet, are so complimentary of their time here in Merrimack. We wish both Alicia and Brianna well. We have a motion to accept resignations. All together, gotcha. Yes. Uh, let's move on to nominations then. There are quite a few nominations for you to consider tonight. And I just want to echo some things that uh, Bill has said over the last couple of weeks that the quality of the candidates that we're bringing to you are just dramatically different than they had been last year. So I think that's a combination of the good work of the MTA contract, but also um, really trying to bring forward a, a different message and, and a different perspective um, when we're meeting with folks and, and encouraging them. Merrimack is becoming their top choice. So that's that's really great. Um, the first uh, educator I'm bringing forward is Emily Clare. She will become a science teacher at Merrimack Middle School, and that is a relationship to Steve Clare, if you're wondering. Uh, Lauren Danis, a elementary education teacher. She'll join the team at um, JMU's. Deborah Worthman, she'll be a special education teacher at Merrimack High School. Haley Ness will be a math teacher at Merrimack Middle School. Ellen Pelland um, is, will become our new social worker at Merrimack High School. Rebecca Hawks, elementary education teacher, reads Ferry. Mickey McGee will be a new special ed coordinator at Thornton's Ferry. Leah Donovan, language arts teacher at Merrimack Middle School. And Rachel Allen will be a preschool teacher at James Master Cola Elementary School. Do I have a motion to accept? I would be happy to make a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. Thanks, Jenna. Second from Lori. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes five zero zero. All right, moving on to committee reports. Um, I have one. We met the Health Trust Containment Committee met last week. Um, open enrollment has 
officially closed. Uh, it went well. Um, they wanted me to remind um, faculty who live in the district that, uh, again, Blue Choice, the Blue Choice plan is going away in June 25. Um, and they also reported that um, the safety coordinator training funds uh, were proportioned out throughout many of the schools for in wellness incentives for staff. They had lunch incentives. They did things like um, raffling yoga mats and um, sunscreen and, um, you know, kind of general summary type things for our faculty. Um, and I heard uh, from an inside source at Thornton's Ferry, it was Try It Tuesday. So they would have like these kind of out there, not out there, but unique lunch options for the faculty. And um, my, my wife enjoyed them, so. Um, <clears throat> and our next meeting is on the 19th of September. And they are looking for members um, from some of the schools in town. So if you teach in Merrimack schools and live in Merrimack and wanna be a part of that, um, reach out to our HR director who would be happy to sign you up. Can I just say that the Try It Tuesday extended to the kids? Oh. Yeah. And. <laughs> My daughter loved it. She would come home and be like, today we tried jicama. And I'm like, really? Was That's, it good? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And I had never tried it before. She, you know, literally, like, the stuff, she, oh, she, she would <laughs> be a broccoli salad with with onions in it. I wasn't fond of that no, or whatever, you know, no. but, but they would try it. It was great. And the kids could try it if they wanted. I love that idea. So just awesome. Yeah, great. All right, go ahead, Lori. All right, so the first meeting of the Joint Loss Management Committee met, and it's a very wide-ranging team because we have to represent both employees and employers. So we have administration, we have Matt, uh, we have Melissa, who will be serving as the chair this next the next two years. And it was fascinating to hear from Primex and see a very detailed list of all the injuries that employees have experienced and the payouts for those injuries and the types. And um, there is just innumerable ways that we can hurt ourselves in our own <laughs> employment. So <laughs> the, the, the charge of this is to work with the safety teams that are in the buildings to um, minimize any risk to employees and also to promote employee safety, both from accidents and falls, but also from interactions with students or other faculty and staff members. And along with that, minimize the cost to the district. So we will be meeting four times this next year and those dates are being coordinated. I've got two. I have the my notes from Parks and Rec that I forgot at the last meeting, um, which, are they have another meeting coming up this week um where they're going to be going over the um the parks and rec specific provisions of the town charter um and then in terms of fun stuff that they're doing over the summer there will be the summer concerts in the park on wednesday starting this week through august 16th uh the fourth of july festivities are going to be the evening concert the night before the the high school uh, roadrunners booster club is having their 5k uh in the morning and the rotary is having the pancake breakfast um the parade at one o'clock and the fireworks at 9 15. um they're also doing movies in the park uh this summer on saturday july 29th they're showing top gun maverick on Saturday, August 26th, they're showing Minions Rise of Gru. And on Saturday, September 30th, they're doing Puss, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's fun that they're doing this summer. Um, the other thing is that's relevant to parents with school children is they are going forward with the after school program at Wasserman Park for families from Thornton's Ferry. Uh, next year and registration is open they're busing from thornton's ferry to the function hall at wasserman park and it's it's yeah it's it looks like it's going to be a really good good program and i would love to see it get a lot of support and then my second committee report is the budget committee met on june 6th uh, to have their annual reorganization meeting a little earlier than they have in years past um, chuck mower stepped down as chair and the committee nominated uh, Naomi Schoenfeld as the new chair and Mackenzie Murphy as the new vice chair. Um, and then they will probably start their regular meetings uh, middle of October. All right, look forward to working with them. Uh, any other committee reports? Moving on to correspondence. Go ahead, Lori. 
I had one question. Uh, someone wanted to know what our current graduation rates are. So I said I'd get back to them on that information. I had a community member reach out regarding uh, curriculum, uh, and I sent him up the chain of command. So, any other correspondence? Uh, and additional comments from the board. Go ahead, Lori. So I have one. I know we've been talking about the quality of the the quality of our candidates, and um, so I w I was talking to Vern because. Um, Elin Pellin is the social worker that we just hired, and I can tell you she is one of the best in the business. I'm so excited, especially after seeing the Youth at Risk survey, knowing the need that we have, and knowing that we are hiring one of the best people in the state to come to Merrimack is so exciting. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, Naomi had mentioned the Booster Cub 5K, the Sparkler 5K. I think over the last couple of years, there's been a little bit of a slide of uh, less people participating. I just want to say, I just want to give them a shout out. That is a huge um, fundraiser for them, providing scholarships to students that are on the cross country and track teams. So if you like to run, even if you don't like to run, maybe learn to like to run, walk probably, um, jog, whatever. But it's a r great community event. If you've ever been part of it, it's really fun to be there. Um, I'm encouraging my family to go. I might be the only one, but that's fine. Um, I really, really, it's a great community event and I encourage people to sign up and to be there, say hi to people in your community, run the race, and it's a huge booster um, and a fundraiser for the cross country and track team, so. Naomi? Um, I'm bringing cookies on Thursday. Nice. <laughs> that's exciting. We needed them last year. Yeah. Sweet. And I just wanted to say one last thing. Um, congratulations to everyone making it to the end of the year. This is the last week. Kids are almost done. Teachers are almost done. I've been done for two weeks. So <laughs> bless your hearts. I know where you're at. And thank you so much for all your hard work this year. And for students, enjoy your summer break. Teachers, work on your self-care at the beach. Enough said. Um, we'll open it up to public comments on agenda items. Nice to see everyone. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Still moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good night, everyone.